Hi, I'm Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about how to run your own escape room party. First, I want to tell you a little backstory. A couple years ago, I was invited to go to an, an escape room. This is a public puzzle thing that you go to. There's uh, like somewhere between three and 12 people, and we all showed up. There was a, I knew one person that I went with, but there were a whole bunch of other people we didn't know. And what happened is they walked us in a room that looked like a submarine. It was like an underwater thing, and there was this whole theme, and they locked the door. And there was a machine next to the door that was broken. And they said, okay, you have to figure out how to fix the machine. And the whole thing about this is it, there's a whole bunch of puzzles in the room. And that's what the game is, is can you solve the puzzles in the time to unlock the door before something horrible happens? Like in this case, uh, there was an hour's worth of air. And what they've done there is they've given us a time boundary that we have to solve the puzzles within that time boundary. We have to work together. I had to work with a bunch of people we didn't know. There were a bunch of types of puzzles. Um, some of the, a lot of the puzzles were hidden. So when you walk in the room, you don't know where all the puzzles are. It's not like they're just on a table. They're hidden in the room. And it was a ton of fun. I loved it. I, I love solving puzzles. I love the teamwork and the collaboration. Uh, I love the, the theme, this whole like underwater thing they did. It was really fun. I wanted to throw one of these myself. And I found at the time it was really hard to research how to throw one of these. That's why I'm making this video. At the end of this video, you'll know all of the things I learned from make, throwing my own party and what I did. And hopefully it'll help you or inspire you to throw your own party. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is an escape room? I'll give you a little bit of a backstory for this, but an escape room is a themed room where players have like a, a major puzzle they're trying to solve. And I call that like the boss puzzle. That's the final puzzle. But there are a bunch of other puzzles that they have to solve to unlock that puzzle. And then that puzzle would unlock a door or unlock something that would finish the game. The puzzles might be hidden. It's not like you walk in the room and the puzzles are right there on a piece of paper. There's all sorts of different types of puzzles and they might be hidden under a desk or it might be like a black light reveal. They're all over the place. So the puzzles are hidden. The other thing about escape rooms is typically there are people in the room that are, play as referees. And the referees are there to kind of help you guide you or make sure that, you know, if you go too far off course or if you do something that's out of bounds, they kind of help you stay in bounds to make sure that they can guide you and kind of guide the scenario along. And finally, there's typically a time limit. And the time limit is a bit of a, a thing to make it a bit more fun, a bit more challenging. But also in a public escape room, not everyone wins. Like a lot of times you will walk in a room and they'll say 89% of the people have solved this room or have not solved it and so on. Okay, number two, what is an escape room party? Well, this is where you bring that experience to your home. You invite some friends over and you give them as close to that experience as you can. Now, some things are a bit harder to do. For instance, a lot of homes, maybe having a locked door is, is hard to do. And that's kind of what this video is about, is how to like simulate that or, or alternatives to that. The other thing is, since you're hosting the party and you've probably put the puzzles together and you know how they work, you're going to play the referee of the party. So I'll talk a little bit about that role and what you can do to make that a lot more fun. Finally, I want to talk about, you don't want to have somebody come into a room in your home and go all out on it because they think that a puzzle might be hidden somewhere. So you've got to have some guidelines of what's in bounds. Now here's some tips. The first one is you can do a locked door as a simulation. Since you're a ref, I can say that door is locked and you have to come up with a five digit code to unlock it. And maybe I have some numbers and we play like the Price is Right game where I have to figure out what order they go in or something like that. Um, so you can simulate your door lock as a final puzzle challenge to unlock the door. Another idea is maybe instead of like the door being locked, you can have actual locks, but it locks a box itself. For instance, on my puzzle, I just did something really basic, like this uh, little like toolbox, and I had it locked with what's called a hasp. Now this hasp has six holes in it, and I got this from another video, this idea, but this is a beautiful thing because I can lock this and have six padlocks on here. And that's great because that is six challenges that they have to solve before they can unlock this box. Inside this box can be whatever my goal is. Another tip I wanna talk about is how do you say something's in bounds versus out of bounds when you're doing a home party. What I did is I just bought cheap stickers that went with my theme. Now my theme for my party was Star Wars, which worked really well because everyone that was at the party was into Star Wars. It's an important part of your theme. And 
So I labeled like this box here. I had a little line symbol on it. This envelope, I had an empire symbol on it and this has puzzle pieces in it. So this was uh, in the room. Sometimes I printed things out on pieces of paper such as this. And what that allowed is anyone that was in the room that saw something Star Wars related would know, oh, this goes to this party. It's a very simple and expensive way to kind of label everything. Thing number three, what do you need to plan this party? The first and honestly the most important thing I think is your theme. It could be a fandom, it could be a Harry Potter theme party. I did Star Wars, you can do any sci-fi. You can do a sports team if you want to do like football or you want to do Seahawks. And you get everything be like the players names or the players numbers. Basically you want a theme and the reason that you do this is it sets up your storyline, it sets up your end goal and it sets up all your puzzles. It gives your player something to be interested in. Otherwise you're handing them puzzles and it just feels like work. It's like, here, go solve these 12 puzzles. For my party, I did the theme of Star Wars. And so one of the things you want to define is your end goal. What are they trying to solve? Now I showed you the lockbox. Inside that lockbox, I had printed a, a simple like blueprint for the Death Star. And so my storyline was, you're here to steal this Death Star plans. The other thing to think about on your theme is after you, they solve it, you should probably do like an after party thing. So for me, the after party thing was we're going to watch Rogue One, which ties again into the theme. It's about stealing the Death Star plans. It worked out really well. I think having everything ready to go from start to finish is a great way to really not only like keep your party atmosphere going all the way to the end, but also a way to reward your players for all of the uh, brain teasers that they just had to go through. Finally, the last thing you need is puzzles. And, you know, your, uh, I've got like locks like this. This was a directional lock. I had a lock pick lock. I had a number lock. They, they have these in like four digits, three digits. They have ones with words on them. I had all of those on this hasp. And then I had puzzles that would unlock each of these. For instance, the four digit lock, I could have a puzzle of what was the year for the second Star Wars movie uh, when it was released. But that question was hidden behind another puzzle that they had to solve. So they basically had to work their way through to get to that question, answer that question, and then unlock this lock. And that was one of six locks that I had on this hasp. And so that's kind of what we call the puzzle chain. And the next thing I'll talk about how to set that up. Item number four is the puzzle chain. How do you set this up? I'm gonna diagram this because I think it'll be the best way to kind of explain this for you. Here's an example of a puzzle chain I came up with. This was laying out for, the for them to find along with this right here, which is a codex. Codex is you line up the letters to basically unlock whatever's in here. The Inside of this had lock picks, so they knew when they saw the lock pick lock on there that they had to unlock this. There was no tie between this picture and this codex. What would happen is they'd see that Daisy Ridley, the, the actress who played Ray, was on here. When they flipped it over, there was a QR code. They, I let them use their phones. The QR code took them to a bit.ly image, and the bit.ly image was of a Daisy. So once they put together that Daisy was the word, if they put it into this codex, basically spelled it down here, this came apart. And that would free up the lock picks, which they could then use for the lock pick lock, and one of the locks would fall. Now let's talk about how I designed the puzzle chain, because I think that's something that a lot of people don't get into that's really important. I'm gonna show you how to do a puzzle flow. I'm gonna do it in PowerPoint here, but you can really do it with just a piece of paper and some boxes. PowerPoint's just gonna be easier for you to read and easier for me to type and explain. I'm gonna use SmartArt and go to Hierarchy and select Horizontal Hierarchy, and then just delete everything out here so that we just have one box. This one box is gonna be my end goal. So in this case, for my party, it was Death Star plans. It might be just locked door or whatever your final goal is. I'm gonna hit enter and, and tab, and I'm gonna always be working on the left side here. Now I'm gonna put my four locks that I had. I had a directional lock, 
I had a, and this was the one that went up, down, left, right. I had a lock pick lock. I had a four digit lock, which was just, you needed four numbers. And I had a word lock where you had to actually spell out the word. Now you can see on the right, it's actually drawing out a diagram and it's doing my flow for me. The left hand side is the final goal. And then as we work to the right, it will be the puzzles that the players have to unlock to get through all of these. I'll show you an example. The directional lock required a story. I had written a story to come up with the four directions. So that had, you know, let's say up, down, left, right, which is how you unlock the directional lock. And then I had to think, okay, how do I want them to get the, how do they want the players to have the story revealed to them? And they decided that it'd be really cool if it was basically a coded message. And then when you have a coded message, you also need a decoder. So I'm just going to hit enter and enter and show that you need a coded, you need the message and the decoder. Now I can take this as complicated or as not complicated as I want. I can keep going and say the coded message is hidden in another spot. Um, I can decide how I want to do this. Maybe the decoder is hidden behind another puzzle. So your complexity is up to you, but keep in mind, you're going to want your guests to not become frustrated and they only have certain amount of endurance of how much they're going to want to be doing these puzzles. For my friends, we did about two hours it took them to get through this. And honestly, I think I ran it about 45 minutes too long. I think I should have made things a lot simpler. Continuing on, I'm going to go down to lock pick lock and I'll, I'll basically flesh this one out. I decided to put the lock picks in a codex. I decided that to keep with the theme, the, the password for the codex should be Daisy because I needed a five letter word. And then I decided how am I gonna make that a puzzle to come up with the word Daisy? I put a QR code behind a picture. And that was the flow for the lock pick one. The four digit lock, the password was the year of the second movie because that's great for a four digit, you know, you need four digits and that's what I decided would be cool. And then I wanted to figure out how do I hide that year? And I, of course you can do a, a question, but I wanted to hide the question as well. So I hid the question in a, uh, a normal puzzle piece or a normal puzzle that you had to put together. And the way that I hid it on the puzzle is I also used invisible ink. Now, invisible ink, to decode that, you need an IR light. Uh, was it an IR light? It was a black light, I think. Now, I decided to hide the black light. This, this particular puzzle was designed for a friend who's very clever. So I decided to hide the black light somewhere else. And I'll show you how I did that in, in this diagram. First, we're going to go up to our root here and we're going to say the IR, we're going to type the IR, I'm sorry, black light. And you can see we've got another box up here. And then I again hit enter and tab. And now we've got a second flow happening. And the black light was in a puzzle box. Now, I don't want to get this all confused. So what I'm going to do is highlight this black light and this black light right click and say format shape and then i'll just change the background color here to orange this one here i'm going to also format and i want the background color of this to be blue so what this coloring does is it gives me a little bit cleaner look so that i can see that this black light is actually hidden somewhere else behind a puzzle box. And I can see that the blue is the final goal. So it's very clear now that this is the goal and this is the second path I've started. Let's complete the word lock. So I'll go down here to word lock. And again, I'm, I'm only editing over here. I can hit enter and then hit tab. And I can say the, the password for the word lock was the word pilot. 
and to find the pilot's name there would be let's say a word search is a cool way to hide something or some kind of word puzzle and there you go now we've got an entire puzzle flow and the right hand side is what I need to have out for my players so I need to decide you know if I haven't hidden these things the black lights obviously hidden and that's easily seen because it's highlighted I need to have the coder and decoder for this story I need to have the QR code picture out I need to have the puzzle ready to go I put that in an envelope and labeled it and a word search and the players will start knocking these boxes down working from right to left until they knock all the locks out and get to the Death Star plans. This is how I planned my party. It worked really well. It kept things very logical. It also gave me a checklist of stuff I needed. The other thing I recommend is print this out and give it to each referee that you have working the party because it helps them keep a logical flow of where players are or what they're working on. What happens when you do this, especially when you start hiding stuff and you have things coded and such, it gets very easy to forget when you have this many puzzles, like, wait a sec, what does that decoded thing unlock? So this gives you a nice flow of, oh, this will unlock the directional lock. And if they haven't done the directional lock yet, I can work my way right and see what they need to do to get there. And that really helps out for with giving out hints and things like that as well. Okay, hopefully that was a nice explanation of a puzzle flow and that will help you plan your party and have some success. Step number five is how to deal with hints. People will get stuck on your puzzle sometimes. It's amazing. You might think that you've got the most clever puzzle and they're gonna just like go right through it. And then when the day comes, they get stuck or something isn't explained well, or maybe the puzzle just doesn't flow, whatever. The puzzle basically becomes broken and you've gotta give them a hint to get them past it or just give them some help. There's a couple of things you can do with here that I think you can keep things fun and then you can just kind of decide how competitive you want to be. Do you want to make your puzzle room where everyone wins or do you want to just at the end of the party say, sorry, you didn't complete it in the time allotted, you know, better luck next time. I chose to make it so that they would end up winning the game, but we were going to have some fun with them. For my party, if anyone got stuck on a puzzle, then they were able to ask for a clue, but they had to act out a scene from Star Wars. For instance, I had one gal act out the entire Leia scene for the uh, Help Me Obi-Wan. She had to read it out and in character, and it was great. For a more competitive game, you can do something where you hand out hint tokens, and they have to hand the hint tokens in, and that way they're kind of spending the tokens, and they will you know, eventually get down to their last token and they have to make the decision, can they solve this puzzle or hand it in? Uh, you can do something like that also. So the final thing I want to talk about is what other things can you do to make your party shine? Like, how do you really put it over the top? Now, we talked about the theme and how important the theme is. But imagine if you do your intro and your invitations also themed. So for me, with the Star Wars theme, I was sending out little Star Wars clips before the party ever happened. Now, I didn't choose to tell them that they were going to a puzzle party or an escape room party. So they were getting Star Wars clips and they knew they were getting together with me on that weekend. They really didn't know what was going on, but they got excited about it and they kind of got into the theme of it. Another thing is at the beginning of your party, you have an intro session where you tell the story about your party. What I did is found an online uh, scroll generator that generated the text of Star Wars and scrolled the intro. And I came up with a little story for that. And that was how we introed it. We also, my wife and I bought robes that were Star Wars themed. I was Darth Vader. She was an Ewok. It was adorable. And we stood at the front of the room and we told them the rules and about the escape room in, in those characters. I thought that was really cool. It was a fun thing to do. And it really, again, it kind of elevates the party to another level, makes it a lot more fun. I think another thing that really can make things nice is if you can decorate the room in the theme. I didn't get to do this for my party, but if you do a party where like you're doing a castle theme, you can get some cheap... Uh, there's like these things that you can put on the wall from, from party stores that make it look like it's brick. You can hang little tor torches or sconces, stuff like that. The other thing I think is really important is you can stay on theme and be very inexpensive. If you're doing a pirate themed one, you can print out a bunch of gold coins on paper and then cut them out and then just have a pile of you know paper that looks like a pile of gold coins, stuff like that. So there's some really inexpensive things. You can make a, a chest out of a piece of cardboard. 
it basically anything that kind of makes the room look more like the theme is great. If you're looking to go big budget, I recommend getting a projector. You can project on the wall. If you search for ambience on YouTube, you can find some videos that are ambience for um, medieval themes or even Harry Potter. Uh, you can do star fields if you want to do a sci-fi theme. So you can do things like that to really elevate the room and kind of bring it into the theme. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Fair with Geek Toolkit. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any ideas or if you've thrown an escape room party, please mention it down in the comments. I'd love to hear your ideas. I will try to put some links into things that I thought were useful for as far as puzzle generators. And hopefully you found this very useful and entertaining and also a bit educational. And I hope that you throw some great escape room parties. I really enjoyed mine. I look forward to throwing my next one. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit.